My name is Hugo. I'm um, part of the uh, Red Hat uh, team. I'm a Mexican at um, Massachusetts in the United States. I'm based in the Westford office, and I'm a specialist in um, APIs and messaging, and also an open source advocate. And when we used to travel, uh, a fan of traveling uh, all around, and also uh, government, so I really uh, like to try new food and street food and so on. So I really miss being in a in, in the Czech Republic, uh, as uh, sometimes we were able to taste really good food there. So for today, we're going to be talking a little bit more about Kafka. Uh, we will be introducing some challenges and, and, and the, um, interconnection of systems. And we will talk about the Apache Camel project for those that uh, haven't really heard about that one for the integration. It's a very interesting project. And then we will be talking about one of the sub projects within the Apache Camel umbrella, that is the Camel Kafka Connector project. And what is it offering to us uh, at all? So um, I hope you like the session and please remember you can um, uh, put some questions, comments in the chat, and we can follow up the uh, conversation uh, using this course uh, as part of the event uh, chat. Okay, so first thing, uh, let's talk about Apache Kafka. So. Apache Kafka is the cookie, is the center of this uh, of this chat, and let, let's get a review of, of what is Apache Kafka. So remember, Apache Kafka was a project originally created um, around 2010 uh, within LinkedIn, and it was mainly focused on trying to track all the different web clicks that you do in the site to give some analytics and and more information and insights on how the site was being used. And for that, they were trying to um, get all this information coming from the web system and being able to easily move that uh, information data around and being able to store them um, quickly because the amount of events that they have uh, in the site was growing so much they were uh, facing some limitations on the traditional messaging infrastructure to uh, record all those events so that's why they decided to focus their efforts on creating this publish and subscribe messaging system that allows you to um, implement a very efficient broker that can handle um, uh, thousands of, uh, of uh, messages and events uh, per second. And it become, and, and it has been uh, growing into becoming a data streaming platform. But in the core of the system, it is a distributed commit log. So it is um, a set of, uh, of events coming into a log file that is just appending. So it's very um, focused on on, on having this uh, high throughput nature. And as, uh, as a result, um, it has a distribution in nature because it's doing sharding of the information and, and, and these files across a pool of uh, broker nodes that allows you to have a, a very good uh, throughput. However, most of the people uh, that are starting to talk or getting into the Kafka uh, world, they are focusing on, on just implementing Kafka by itself and thinking that perhaps that uh, implementation, it's its enough to solve um, many different um, problems and, and use cases and technical patterns from microservices or even driven architecture. So let's uh, think about this of a, of a Jedi journey, right? And one of the things that I tell people is when you're focusing on Kafka, it's not like you are in the, you know, the last Jedi type of movie where there's only one Jedi and that you only need Kafka for that and, and that will solve you know, all the universe problems. You are not alone. When we're talking about Pachi Kafka, it's more when we're talking about uh, the uh, first movie where there's a lot of Jedi's around. So don't think about of uh, Kafka by uh, a goal itself, but more like Kafka as, as a tool for that. And this is because Kafka, it's, it's a broader ecosystem, right? Beyond the, the broker, so you know, there's the Apache Kafka project on the, under the Apache umbrella, but that does only include uh, certain features like the APIs and, and some projects like Mirror Maker and so on. However, you know that we need to be able to connect with other systems. We need to be able to interact with other uh, applications. And even for, for the uh, LinkedIn use case for metrics and analytics, you know, you cannot, uh, access a, a Kafka UI and being able to just uh, review the uh, the topics or, and so on. It's not part of the original project. You need to connect with other uh, different parts and systems to be able to export that information, to showcase those data visualization, uh, visualizations, or even able to uh, provide more data into your system. So 
let's talk about how we can um, then be able to connect with, uh, with Kafka and, and, and integrate our systems. And one of those mechanisms uh, within the same Kafka ecosystem, it's the Kafka Connect API. So the idea of the Kafka Connect API is to have this wrapper around the consumer and the uh, producer APIs. And it's this framework that allows you to uh, easily uh, compose uh, transferring of, of data between your Kafka uh, broker cluster and other data systems. And for this, it offers uh, a series of, 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 of um, mechanisms and components that facilitate like data conversion, scaling, and load balancing, because you can create a, a Kafka cl uh, Connect cluster that uh, it's able to handle the life cycle of your connectors or your connector plugins. That's how it's called in the Kafka uh, Connect world for those pieces of software that allows you to have a specialized um, connectivity with, with systems. And it defines a framework for having sync connectors and source connectors, depending if you are moving your data from or of, uh, of Kafka. And also, uh, remember that the Apache project only includes um, two uh, connectors, the file sync and the file source. That means that the ecosystem around more connectors needs to outgrow from the Apache project and it's being provided by uh, additional uh, providers. Uh, there's other uh, companies and providers that have developed their own, sort, uh, their own additional plugins. And uh, you will see that the own databases have their own uh, plugins or other Kafka providers that are inter uh, providing enterprise uh, support. They also have their, uh, their connectors. So this is an ecosystem that's growing and growing and growing. And let's review why uh, uh, Kafka Connect. As I, as I was mentioning uh, before, uh, it's part of, a, uh, of Kafka itself, right? So you are talking about um, a piece that it's uh, very well crafted within uh, the ecosystem to uh, match the capabilities, use the same versions and so on. And as I will mention, if you are using the uh, cluster nature of the Kafka Connect, if you are uh, using the uh, the uh, distributed one, uh, it's uh, scalable and distributed by default. You can also rely on storing your um, tracking information for the offsets within Kafka itself. So it's all automatically able to outscale. And uh, also it offers some uh, things like additional transformations. So transformations, when you are moving your data from one source to another, remember most of the time you will want to have um, some data management so you can uh, you know remove fields or do ch some minor changes so this framework is not an integration tool but it offers um something like the single message transformation that allows you to do some kind of these activities uh for easy of of, of use right and allows you to have this streaming integration batch integration so you will have your connectivity easy and configuration based but and and you can also write your own um your own connectors. So in this case, um, remember that when you're, we're talking about this, um, this positioning on the, uh, on the first movies of the uh, Star Wars trilogy, when there's a lot of Jedi's already available, sometimes you need to, you need to remember that most of those Jedi's are coming from different uh, types of species and they talk different languages. And, and this is very similar to what we have with Kafka, right? So. Uh, we have Kafka and then we need to connect to very different type of systems from coming from Slack to MongoDB to uh, uh, passing through Telegram or exporting those to Elasticsearch. So sometimes those uh, systems are uh, having uh, protocols that are not included in, in some of the uh, other connectors providers. So you have to uh, either ask the, uh, the system provider to give you an easy to consume API or you need to uh, you know, craft and, and, and develop your own specific connector. And sometimes that is uh, very complicated. It's like if you need to understand how to connect to each one of those services um, being just the uh, Kafka admin. So uh, taking the same approach as, uh, as we were mentioning on the uh, Star Wars trilogy, why don't you benefit of, you know, some mechanisms that are already available for you? Like um, in this case, C3PO, who is very fluent in over more than 6 million forms of communication, and you are able to use and rely on these uh, different type of technologies to be able to help you with that uh, integration within Kafka and other systems. So this is the approach to you know reuse some of the uh, content that is already there that has been proved for a lot of time because 
projects that have been dealing with integration since since a while, and then being able to tune your Kafka uh, ecosystem to be able to use this kind of components. So let's uh, get a little bit more into what it's uh, Apache Camel. So remember, Apache Camel, it's another project under the Apache Foundation that helps us to deal with integrations. So in a nutshell, what is Apache Camel? Remember, it's this um, open source project uh, that is basically the Swiss knife, uh, uh, the Army, uh, Swiss Army knife for a framework uh, as, as for integration. So it has a lot of components, more than 350 of them, to be able to do data transformation, to do protocols and connectivity, as well as uh, the implementation of enterprise integration patterns. So you can model your um, uh, your connection flow or your data flow as, as a route and then you can do interesting things like being able to do um, aggregation or splitting or content enrichment and so on and and this is a project that has been around for more than 10 years it's a very active project and, and the community is growing and, and, and blossoming all, all the time they're um, moving uh, according to the new technology and, and they are evolving all, all, all the time. So if you want to take a look closer on how camel routes uh, look, you can see the following um, slide where you define using the uh, camel DSLs of the domain specific languages to define how your flow or your integration is gonna be um, described. Okay, and uh, sorry about that. I, I was uh, mentioning the, uh, how, how the camel routes look like so it's um, it's the um, the um, way to check this as um, as a DSL where you can uh, put like from where is your data coming and where is the uh, endpoint that you are uh, sending your information to. So we have different ways to express those DSLs. They have the uh, Java version that it's based on on on, on Java language, where you have. Uh, a fluent DSL that helps you to uh, map this kind of approach, or you have also the XML DSL where you can define a spring uh, kind of, uh, of, of objects in, in, in XML and then define again uh, using tags uh, from where your data is coming. In this case, for example, it's coming from a, from a, a file that it's uh, in that it's stored in the data inbox uh, uh, folder, and then it's going to be sent into a GMS queue that it's called order. So if you can see, there's using this uh, URI uh, pattern where you define what is the component that you're going to uh, use and where is the destination for that. And Camel, the architect, the Camel architecture, it's a little bit more complex. So. If you want to take a look, it's like if you really want to get into the insights of uh, C3PO, there's um, a lot of details inside this. And uh, there's the implementation of the integration, integration patterns, the management of the context within the route, the routes, and, and so on. But the interesting part here is the concept of the components that allows you to do this integration with other systems and then being able to you know, transfer and pass the information along your um, your flows. So this is the really the really interesting part that you really want to um, to focus on and on those components that are already available as part of Apache Camel to be able to uh, simplify your integration. And at the beginning we were talking about the uh, Apache Camel uh, umbrella project and the sub projects that are available. So if you already have uh, are familiar with, with Camel, you have seen that they have been releasing now um, a different runtimes for each one of the uh, deployment options. So you can run in the traditional Caraf mode using the Camel Caraf project, or you can deploy on top of Spring Boot. And if you uh, check the previous session with uh, with um, with uh, Quarkus, there's another option to be able to deploy uh, Camel on top of that uh, container native and cloud uh, native uh, runtime. So you have the uh, also the Camel um, core project where all these um, um, internals of the uh, of the framework are being developed. And if you're thinking about uh, deploying Camel on a serverless uh, environment running on top of Kubernetes, Camel K is the way to go. But in this moment, we're going to be talking more about the Camel um, Kafka connector sub project, where 
we are focusing on dealing with uh, Camel and well as Kafka. So let's uh, get a little deep a diver on, um, on the Camel Kafka connector project. And in this case, the idea that the uh, Camel contributors have with, uh, with this project was to tune their components to be able to play well together with Kafka. So it's uh, the idea of having this, um, this part of, of the time when you need you know, C3P to be able to easily uh, talk and, uh, and being able to you know, mention and, and being able to speak what the dark side is saying. So you need to tune also um, C3PO to be able to um, ingest and, and, and being able to, uh, to mention what the, what the dark side is saying. So this is very similar or what the, uh, the, the Camel team deemed did for uh, making uh, the Apache Camel connectors being able to play ni nicely with Kafka. And this is why they create this uh, project. So the Camel Kafka connector project, it's a pool of uh, Kafka connectors that are built on top of the Apache Camel uh, components. The idea is to reuse mo in, in a very simple way all the different Camel components that are already available, the, three mo three, the more than 350 connectors that are part of the project and being able to just add this um, logic and, and this uh, tiny um, integration to make them run as if they were uh, native uh, connector plugins for Kafka Connect. And this uh, was um, very successful because now we have uh, connectors uh, that are coming from the uh, Camel uh, components and all, most of them are already available. So there's a connector list that you can check with all the different connectors available. And they are being generated every time there's a new, uh, a new version of the Camel project. So you get all those uh, connectors available um, and, and easy to use. And it's uh, live, as, as we mentioned, as a sub-project from the Apache Camels are, are, are really uh, integrated. So if we think about why do we use uh, the Camel Kafka uh, connector? So most of the times I was saying, you want to have your Kafka being able to talk to other systems, either to get information from those systems or being able to push that information and being able to do a little bit more transformation. So remember, there's two ways to do the integration with your system. You can use the uh, traditional Camel approach where you need to you know, deal with the, um, with the, uh, with the uh, company that uh, retrieves information as its uh, consumer or producer, and you can do you know, heavyweight transformations, or you can use this new approach to uh, have a simple no-code or low-code uh, type of uh, configuration using the internals of Kafka Connect. And it, it have uh, three like use cases here. You have consolidated events that you are taking from a Mongo instance, and then you have several instances and you want to consolidate information, you can use um, the uh, Mongo thing, so you can send information there for analytics or reporting. Um, you can also use the Elasticsearch sync that it's a component, so you can uh, use the, uh, the Elasticsearch REST API to send information from your Kafka clusters. And also, for example, if you're getting uh, logs, that is a, a use case that people like, for example, in Telefonica they're having, where they're taking uh, information coming from their logs in, in, in the Kubernetes environment, and they're using uh, the, the connectors to be able to send information as, as an uh, integration log, and then being able to then um, produce, uh, process and, and do a streaming analytic on, on those logs. And there's a ton of connectors already available, right? That allows you not only to connect to um, Elasticsearch, but also being able to connect to things like Slack. So no need to write Python code to uh, connect to Slack or any other client. You can reuse the connector and just configure your tokens and then being able to send information into Slack or, for example, getting data from Google Sheets or being able to send information there. And a little bit of, uh, of detail on the code configuration. So remember, this is, this is pure uh, configuration. There's no code here. Don't need to write the Java DSL or the XML, uh, the XML DSL. This is using the, cam, the, the Kafka Connect approach where you just uh, configure uh, where is your class and the different parameters that your class needs to for, for the configuration. So in the first uh, example, we have uh, Amazon S3, then sending information using the configuration. You just need to 
uh, pass the information on your secret and, and, and your access token and, and what is the region that you are being um, uh, querying that S3 bucket. And if you're sending from Kafka to Amazon SQS, for example, it's the exact same thing. You need to tell the component where you're, where is the topic that you're listening to and then where is the path with the information on, on how you are going to be accessing the uh, SQS um, uh, queues, right? And if you want to get started in your journey, there's uh, a, a very simple steps you can follow to get uh, to get started with this uh, type of component. So um, the first thing is, yeah, you can go to the uh, to the website on, on, on Camel uh, at Apache.org, and then being able to navigate into the uh, list of supported connectors, where you can find information on which of those connectors are. Um, are available as async connectors or also as source connectors. So not all the different not all the all the different components are available as both. Sometimes are some are uh, sync, some are source, or sometimes they they do as uh, work as both. And then you can find the download link so you can uh, download the components and then being able to create your um, add, add them as as part of your um, Kafka Connect plugins uh, folder, or you can create your container images if you're running, for example, using um, StreamC. And now uh, that you have downloaded the un unzip the file, you can then um, take that um, that set of uh, of jars, put in your plugins directory, and then you can configure the connector. So in this example that you're seeing here, if you are using uh, just uh, traditional deployment on a, of Kafka on a, on a virtual machine or, or, or a server, um, and you're using the uh, standalone mode for Kafka Connect, you can just uh, add the uh, properties on your um, properties file and then start that process uh, with that configuration. However, most of us will be using the container-based image, for example. And this is a, 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 an option that is very common for where you're using uh, StreamC, for example, to deploy in, on, on Kubernetes or if you're just uh, using the Docker Compose um, uh, configuration, you take a, a base image and then you can add the plugins either by creating your own image or just uh, configuring your Docker Compose. And then you can configure this uh, new container. And in the case of, for example, um, uh, StreamC, you can uh, either use the uh, REST endpoint, so you can send that information directly as the um, as the endpoint, or you can uh, also define that as a custom resource because uh, StreamC uses custom resources to be able to define the different um, configuration of your Kafka ecosystem. So you can define a, a Kafka node, or you can define a Kafka Connect cluster, and also the Kafka Connect connectors. But if not, then you can use the the REST API for that. And for that. Let's uh, let's see if we can do um, this um, in a few minutes and show you the power of the camel connectors. So please confirm me that you are able to see the um, my screen and my demo. I can see only the presentation. Yep. Yep. Uh, no. Yep. No, it's good. Okay. Let's increase the font. Okay. Can you increase it a little bit more, please? Yeah, sure. Let's uh, do it a couple of more. That should be better. Thank you. All right. So first, I'm going to clone uh, my repo. And oh my God. So I prepared this example to show you how to do a simple um, trigger, um, a simple um, trigger implementation of a timer that will send some information into our Kafka topic. So for this, I have um, this example where I have my camel Kafka connectors. 
And here I do have a very simple uh, configuration. First, I have a Docker Compose file that will start a, a local um, running version of, of a Kafka cluster. So if you want to take a look at the Docker Compose, it's basically uh, defining the zookeeper, a broker using the um, examples from uh, from the um, component platform. It's using schema registry, and I'm defining here a connect image that is using the uh, Kafka Connect data gen example from um, from Confluent. And the interesting thing here is that I'm adding here the um, plugins. Uh, directory, so I will be um, mounting this as a file system in the same images. So um, when Kafka Connect starts, it will query that information and then retrieve the information from the uh, from the plugins and will automatically load my uh, my Camel plugins from from that place. So uh, then the thing we need to do it's uh, go into the plugins. directory and currently I don't have anything. So what we can do is then go into the, uh, into the page easily. So it's um, camel.apache.org. And as I, as I was mentioning you, you go to the uh, documentation and you can find the different projects here, core, camel K, but we're interested in seeing the camel Kafka connector. So we go to the uh, documentation and you can check the connectors list here and well a little bit more documentation on how to get started and here's all the different oh my god this is a little bit odd so well something happened there right um but yeah it, it should be a table with uh with the information it looks like somehow the ui has been messed around let's see if we can find our connector um we're looking for the timer connector. Oh, never mind. I, I think I can um, I can download a pre-downloaded version because the timer it's uh... okay. You know the demo gods are playing against me, so let's see. We'll have the uh, camel. Okay. I sent you a link on the chat if that helps. Ah, okay. Uh, don't worry. I have a, an example here. So I'm going to. Just uh, copy my uh, into my plugins directory. So I have this, and then I go to my project where it's uh, Kafka examples, Kafka connectors. So I'm just gonna paste here my my connector. And as I was mentioned, after you download the zip file that uh, that Octavio has shared with the uh, with with uh, with the chat. There's uh, different jars that you can get from uh, from that jar, and those are the implementation jars that you need require from from Camel. They're slimmed down, so you don't need to download everything, and they will help us for this. So now that we have downloaded the um, the uh, file, and then we are able to uh, start our our environment. So we're gonna do get back. And then we can do Docker compose, compose up. We'll for the recreate, and this will start the Docker compose file that I showed you. Uh, it's already in use, so okay. Let's. Uh, Okay, so my container is already running. OK. 
Okay. Let's try again. Now it's creating. As I mentioned, it's just running one node for Zookeeper, one node for the broker, uh, the schema registry, and the connect uh, the connect cluster. So now that it's running, we can check that everything it's uh, it's there. So let's do a Docker PS. And if everything runs correctly, there's the um, the uh, different um, uh, uh, containers running there. So now that they're here, let's do some uh, integration. So as uh, I set up at the Kafka Connect, we have available a REST API that allows us to interact with the Kafka Connect cluster and being able to query the information on the plugins and show the information there. So let's do a curl command to the uh, local host, uh, port 8083. That's the uh, port that is exposed by, by the uh, connect cluster. And let's let check the connector plugins available. Um, let's make it a little bit clear using JQ. And here we have, we have the um, uh, default uh, components available are the plugins, the connectors for Mirror Maker, for the file stream, the sync and the source that I was mentioning that are part of the um, default uh, implementation. And now we have also the uh, data gen generator connector that is the one that I'm using as a base image, as well as the generic camel sync and the generic camel source connectors. But the one that we are really interested into is this connector, the camel timer source connector that is now available in my Kafka connect uh, cluster. So now that we check that uh, the plugins directory was correctly read from uh, my environment, then I can start to interact with the configuration. So for that, I have uh, crafted a configuration file for configuring my timer. So if we can see the uh, timer.json file, we can see that we have uh, a component that is gonna be called timer. So it's the timer that will be triggering every certain amount of time. I'm going to be using this uh, configuration for my connector. I have the camel timer source connector. Uh, we'll be sending messages into a topic called camel.timer.one. Uh, um, we just have to uh, put a name on, on our timer component that's part of the camel configuration. So it's timer and it will be triggering every five seconds. So 500, uh, 5,000 milliseconds. We're going to be using um, some more traditional Kafka configuration, like in this case, in, in this uh, case, I'm gonna use the string converter for the key, a JSON converter for the value, and some more configuration for the task of the uh, Kafka Connect. In this case, I just need one when trigger to, uh, one timer to, to be triggered. And these are the transformations that Kafka Connect provides for you to use when uh, using the, uh, the uh, Kafka Connect uh, framework. In this case, I'm just gonna use the hoist field transformation to be able to create a JSON file that is called timer. Uh, so we have, have a, instead of just triggering with a null value, I just want to uh, put some information like what is the topic that I'm using for the trigger, as well as uh, uh, painting or well, putting the, uh, in, with, within the payload, the timestamp of my trigger. So I'm gonna use the hoist value and then I'm gonna insert, insert value transformation and I'm gonna be adding a field that's called TS for the timestamp and the information on, on about the, the topic. So this is traditional Kafka Connect configuration. There's nothing related to Camel here, no DSL and, and nothing like that. The only thing you need to know is these uh, properties that are part of the uh, documentation for, um, for the Camel connectors. So now that I have uh, go over this, I can then post um, to the REST API to create this connector. So let's um, run another curl cover. And we're gonna uh, do a post method using uh, the connectors uh, endpoint. And I'm gonna use uh, this uh, JSON file as the payload for my call. So if we run this, we have a successful um, uh, result. And then it just says me that the uh, timer was uh, correctly configured and it's now running on my cluster. So let's check if this is uh, really happening. So for that, I'm gonna be using a Kafka um, utility called Kafka Cat. It's a, it's a simple way to interact with your Kafka cluster without using the traditional um, console consumer, console cons uh, producer um, 
uh, scripts that are part of the project. So you can uh, check this, it's, uh, it's pretty useful. And for this, I'm gonna be reading from my local host, 9092, that's the, uh, the uh, bootstrap server URL that I'm using in my local environment. And I'm gonna select the topic camel.timer.1, that is the uh, topic that I configured to uh, be triggering the information. So now let's uh, take a look and then you can see that it's uh, gonna be publishing uh, the information on the timer and the topic every certain amount of time. So every five seconds, we will get a new event, a new record coming into the topic that is being triggered by my um, camel con component. So if, sometimes you will need, you know, to trigger, you just want to get information every certain amount of time. You can craft a little bit on the data that you want to uh, to receive and, and so on. So it's pretty straightforward. This is a sync. Uh, connector, but you can also use other connectors, as I was mentioning, to get uh, information out of your cluster. So let's uh, get back to the slides. Hugo, yeah. sorry to interrupt you, but I have to warn you that you have uh, three minutes left, okay? Correct. I'm already done. I'm just going to my takeaways. Good. So I hope you liked the demo. Uh, it was pretty interesting. And then for the takeaways uh, that I wanted to share with you, it's that we have um, the combination of two really interesting projects from the Apache Foundation. So from one side, we have all the power of the data stream platform that Kafka represents. And then we have all the knowledge and the accumulation of experience that the Camel uh, team has on, on the integration side. And playing them together allows you, you as a Kafka Connect user to get a lot of new integrations and new, a lot of options to connect your to your system. And for uh, the Camel users allows you to, you know, use, reuse all that knowledge that you have on the components and the connectors to be able to easily plug in into the Kafka ecosystem using the uh, very straightforward uh, Kafka Connect approach. And finally, I want to show you some of the uh, links um, that I use here. So you can go to the uh, Camel Kafka Connector GitHub projects. You can follow the conversation on the Sulip chat, or you can also follow them on Apache Camel for uh, more in-depth information. So I hope you like this session. I think we are running out of time. I uh, really appreciate the invitation to join you. And if you want to know a little bit more on what we are doing on the APIs and the event-driven architecture world, you can follow me on Twitter on at H Guerrero with double O at the end. Or also I invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel where you can find some uh, more um, demos and examples and videos on how to work with APIs and, and messaging.